Well, we're on. We can kind of jump right into it and roll. In fact, at this point, with Hang being, that's not a year old yet, but uh, I feel, yeah, I feel like we're kind of in a catch up. And and that's, by the way, the biggest thing I learned about doing the research that I hadn't realized before is, I think you guys were talking to Aquarium Drunkard and kind of talked about how long ago you'd planned this entire run. I've never heard of a single band ever doing that and, and then pulling it off if they even tried it. Too. We're uh, hyper conceptual. It's our biggest strength and our biggest weakness. Yeah. I mean, well, what is the story there? Like, so we're talking, what, 2010, 2011, you guys mapped this grand thing out? Well, yeah, uh, around the time of, like, recording that, that uh, Red Triangle album, we sort of mapped out the... We just had a, an idea. We had ideas for lots of albums, yeah. you know, all sort of at once. And then we just sort of, I guess, put them in some sort of logical order. <laughs> to make them but i mean they evolved over time right like hang isn't exactly what we thought you know it would be when we came up with the idea it was when we thought of it it would be more like only orchestra like no rock band or something like that like really disney but it sort of evolved you know over time and into what it was any of that just based on budget like we can do this at this point because hopefully we'll have more money at this point no it was just based on you know what would actually be interesting to listen to or what you know it happened to work out because most groups have get their biggest budget like on their third you know do a three album deal so we had a big budget for the third record so it worked out (laughs) and by the way the the orchestra is good in fact you know i know you know fans of 60s and 70s that that you are and i am it's kind of wondering like did you have you ever thought about actually reaching out to van dyke parks and seeing if he could if he could help out yeah we did we we reached out to him but um it it didn't it didn't work out oh it's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Cause we got we got uh, Trey Pollard and Matthew E. White who are like uh, Van Dyke Parks, you know. No slouches. Peak. Yeah. yeah, no slouches. Cause I, like young, young, and you know, young Van Dyke. I don't know what that says though, because Van Dyke worked with like Silverchair. <laughs> well, Van, yeah, Van Dyke's hyper prolific, and it, but he changes his style. You know, like if you if you hire Van Dyke, what's kind of great about him is he's not necessarily going to give you what he thinks you want you know he's not going to give you the song cycle style arrangement he's going to like he's evolved over time right you know like any great artist so we kind of wanted the the older hollywood sound and there's i mean there's so much style on this because that old hollywood sound there's a little bit of broadway i think the most surprising thing is dixieland yeah when i heard that like for did you actually have to I mean, most artists, and you're, you guys are not most artists. That's that's very obvious from the very beginning. <laughs> Correct. But most artists do sort of have, you know, the sandbox that they play in. And to get out of that is nearly impossible. Like, for all of these sounds, do you, do you, is it any point where you're just like, what would be great is if we had this, now I have to learn how to play that. You know, I've always sort of, the, what's funny about that Avalon song is that I've always, I've always sort of played piano like that, like in that, like, kind of ragtimey way. I don't know why. I just have always loved piano that sounded like that. So that was actually kind of the easiest one. <laughs> what about all the other stuff in there, though? I mean, was there any challenging genre that? Hmm. I mean, obviously not too. Not really, you know, it really wasn't. <laughs> yeah, it really wasn't too challenging. Like a lot of it was, you know, executed pretty, pretty smoothly. Yeah, luckily, like with the Lemon Twigs, Michael and Brian, I think, are responsible for a lot of that, just because of their infinite musical skill. They were able to. They can play anything. Right? Yeah. I saw them for the first I got to see them live for the first time at Bonnaroo this past and lived up to every expectation that I had. It's like, yeah, they're amazing. What an incredible little duo. And, I mean, you guys, it seemed like you invited a lot of people, not just the orchestra, but you've got more is more collaborations than you've ever put on record on this one. Yeah, technically. More Star Power, the record before, had a lot of, like, guests on it, but this one had a lot of, like... Uh, actual like playing and stuff you know the other one was like you know it was like featuring you know whatever wayne coin or something but he, right. you know he's like on the track for like two seconds or something like there's not this huge the co- the collaborations on hang were, were a lot more like meaningful and substantial than on star power i'd say and like what point do you do you have to rein it in before it gets away from you when all of these different people are playing on it i think we just have to have to only use people that we completely trust yeah uh, furthermore, there's another song. Uh, was it on your uh, on your own love again? Is that is that the cover, right? Yeah. Where did that come from? It was just always uh, uh, backlogged in my mind as a good song to cover if we ever needed one, which we don't do really do covers. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's 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 by Jessica Pratt, and she's one of the few contemporary like rock and roll traditional artists that I think either of us listen to. So it made sense, I guess. Talking about not listening to contemporary i mean the 70s is all over you guys uh, various parts of other decades too uh, i was sort of thinking about how conveniently timed 
your style, your your choice uh, of love of music, the seventies, and and what was going on in America, and the, it seemed like the infrastructure everywhere, the literal infrastructure was crumbling, yeah. and, and how well parallel <laughs> that is happening right now. <laughs> yeah, it sort of worked out. Who knew? <laughs> in the most, I guess, unfortunate sort of ways, but you know, it's. Couldn't have predicted it. Yeah, it's a good time for Foxygen. Um, I also want to say, I don't know if it's common knowledge yet, no, because you know, I'm we got Houndmouth producing the record. Yeah, yeah, we're we're in the in the in the depths. I yeah. have only heard amazing things about this. It's the I'll just say it's the most experimental record I've ever worked on. Really, it's hyper experimental. 